Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Tyler Ruggy. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys what in my opinion are four of the absolute easiest pet reptiles you could possibly get. You're still gonna have to put in some effort. There are different requirements you do obviously have to meet to be able to take care of these reptiles. So don't expect to not have to put in any work at all, especially if you don't know anything about them. You are going to have to learn a bit and get used to taking care of them. But all I'm saying is that these are, in my opinion, some of the easiest overall to take care of. Also, what I want to throw in here is that this is by no means a care guide for any of these animals. I'm going to be spitting out some random bits of information as far as what they require, but I'm by no means going to tell you everything you need to take care of these animals. I'm just telling you why they are pretty simple to take care of. So on this list, I'm going to be telling you two lizards and two snakes, so a total of four reptiles that I think are pretty easy. So first we're gonna start off what in my opinion is by far like probably the easiest, most low maintenance reptile you could possibly get and that is the crested gecko. Crested geckos are very easy to take care of overall, but they're also, in my opinion, one of the coolest little reptiles you could possibly get. They stay fairly small, they're handleable, they are a bit jumpy, so they'll often want to jump off of you unless you get them pretty used to handling. Some are better at handling than others, but they are not usually aggressive by any means, and even when they bite you, it doesn't hurt very much. So all I'm saying is you have nothing to fear with the Crested Gecko. The Crested Gecko requires a fairly small enclosure. Now, the Crested Gecko you can't keep in a tiny tank, but it is still a fairly small requirement. So the bare minimum standard for a Crested Gecko is usually considered to be a 20 gallon tank on its side because they are arboreal, so they need a vertical setup. What I would personally recommend keeping them in is an 18 by 18 by 24 Exoterra. This is just like the perfect size for a Crested Gecko, and 18 by 18 by 24 is fairly small. Another great thing about the Crested Gecko that a lot of people love is that they do not have to eat live insects. Crested Geckos, although they can benefit from having some insects in their diet, People typically feed them crested gecko diets like Pangea or Rapashi, and these are just a powdered diet that you mix with water and you give it to them, and that's all they have to eat really. There are Pangeas that have insects included in them, so they still get the insects in their diet without you actually having to feed them live insects. Yeah, a lot of people just love the fact that you don't have to feed them live insects because a lot of people don't want to have to deal with keeping roaches or crickets or anything in their house. Some people just don't like touching bugs. So if you're one of those people, you would love the Crested Gecko because you do not have to feed them insects. However, I would still recommend giving them some live insects here and there as a treat because I think it can be very enriching for them to be able to hunt for food in their enclosure. So even if you just went to the pet store and bought a few crickets and let them loose in their enclosure once every couple weeks, I think that would fulfill that. But overall, you don't really have to feed them insects. They can be perfectly healthy on just their crested gecko diet. And the next thing that makes crested geckos super easy is they do not require any UVB bulb, any heat bulb, or really any heat source in general. Don't require any UVB because in the wild, they live in a very heavily shaded area where they don't get much exposure to UVB. So in captivity, they don't require it at all to be healthy. And then as for their temperature requirements, they can handle a very large gradient as low as probably mid 60s up into about 80 degrees. So usually your room temperature is going to fall in that range. And then they absolutely cannot tolerate temperatures that are in the upper 80s. So just make sure your room also isn't getting too warm. But if you can maintain temperatures basically in the 70s, then that is absolutely perfect for the Crested Gecko, and they aren't going to require any other external heat source. Now the one thing that you will have to keep up with with the Crested Gecko is humidity because they do require a pretty high humidity. The humidity in your house probably isn't going to be high enough for the Crested Gecko because they prefer ranges anywhere from like 50 to 90% humidity. You're gonna want a gradient, so you're going to want to mist them once or twice a day, just depending on how well your enclosure maintains humidity. Typically, if you give them a good misting in the morning and a good misting at night and kind of let the humidity drop in between your mistings a little bit, you're gonna be good to go. Just 
just the fact alone that you don't have to feed them bugs. And there's also no real lighting or heating requirement, I think makes them really easy. So of all the reptiles I'm going to mention in this video, by far the easiest in my opinion is just the crested gecko. The next thing, and this is going to be the other gecko that I recommend as a pretty good beginner reptile is the leopard gecko. Once again, the leopard gecko lives in a fairly small enclosure with the minimum you should keep them in being about, again, a 20 gallon long. So just overall, that isn't a huge enclosure that you need for them. And then their diet is also, again, pretty simple to manage. However, they are insectivores. So if you don't like insects or you don't want to deal with insects, then leopard geckos probably aren't for you. And you might want to stick with the crested gecko, but luckily leopard geckos only eat insects. So that's all you really have to deal with. A lot of other reptiles out there like bearded dragons, for example, and skinks require a huge variety of different things like insects, veggies, and fruits. The leopard gecko diet is pretty straightforward. You just wanna give them insects and give them a decent variety. So maybe give them some dubier roaches and some crickets here and there, and maybe some worms. And overall, it's fairly simple. So just make sure you're giving them a variety of insects and that's really all they need. Also, obviously you wanna make sure you're giving them the supplementations that they require as far as calcium and vitamins go. So then leopard geckos also do have a temperature requirement that you're going to need a heat source for. And you're simply going to achieve this just by putting a heat pad under their enclosure on one side that's attached to a thermostat. Luckily, they don't require any form of lighting. Some people will give them a heat bulb as an extra heat source if they feel it's necessary or they will give them like a UVB light because some people will say that their geckos do enjoy coming out and basking a little bit, but those are not requirements by any means. You do not need any of those things to have a healthy, happy leopard gecko. What's also really nice is you don't have to worry a ton about humidity. Overall, they live in a fairly dry climate, so just the humidity in your household usually will do, so you don't have to worry about misting their enclosure. However, you do need to provide them with a humid hide, so they just have a hide area that has a high humidity that they can go into when they're going to shed. So next we can move on to the snakes that I would recommend for a beginner. And the very first snake I'm going to show you guys is the corn snake. So corn snakes, by far in my opinion, probably the absolute easiest snake you could possibly take care of. They're overall just wonderful snakes. Corn snakes are very handleable and usually very docile animals. You don't usually have to worry about them biting you a ton. And even if they do bite you, their bites are very, very harmless and you probably won't even feel them. I feel like people are very afraid of snake bites, but a lot of snake bites really don't hurt at all and are very harmless. You should be more afraid of a dog bite, but also their overall care requirements are very easy. The only downside with these snake options I'm going to be telling you about is they do require bigger enclosures than the geckos that I mentioned because snakes do get bigger and longer and therefore they usually require more space to be able to stretch out and move around in. So for the corn snake, the enclosure requirement, the bare minimum people will usually recommend is a 40 gallon, but some people will even recommend a 75 gallon. If you have the space for a decent sized enclosure, I wouldn't let that deter you from getting a corn snake because they are really awesome creatures. You can set up a really cool and pretty like display enclosure for them. But overall their care requirements other than the larger enclosure size are very easy to keep up with. So they are going to be eating mice as their staple for their diet. So that's another huge downside with snakes is you do have to feed them rodents, but you do not have to feed them live. I would recommend feeding frozen thawed. It's just a lot easier. Corn snakes will eat mice and you usually only have to feed them once every one to two weeks. That's a huge plus for snakes is that they don't eat very frequently. It's not like you have to feed them every day or even multiple times a week. You just have to feed them once and then they're good for the next week or two. And they can even go months without eating. Not that you should let them go months without eating, but I'm just saying if you for some reason one week just forgot to feed your snake, it wouldn't be the end of the world. That's really all they require as far as their food goes. And they're also very good eaters. Like I've never had any of my corn snakes refuse a meal and I've never really heard of corn snakes going on huge hunger strikes or anything. And then again, they don't have any special lighting requirements. You aren't really going to need a heat bulb or any UVB bulbs. Just none of that is necessary. And then as far as their heating requirement goes, 
They need pretty mild temperatures. Their warm side, you're just gonna wanna be at around 82 degrees. You're most likely going to need a heat pad on a thermostat just so you can have a nice warm spot for your corn snake to go to to go digest their food. And then you don't really have to worry about humidity because the range that they're good with is anywhere from like 30 to 50-ish percent. The humidity in your home is usually going to be completely fine. That's really about it. If anyone ever asks me what beginner like snake they should get, I'm always going to recommend a corn snake. So last but not least, and this is last for a reason, but I'm very conflicted with this, and that is the ball python. They're super, super popular snakes, but for good reason, and that is they make wonderful pets. A lot of people don't really recommend them to beginners, and I'm going to get into why, but first let's talk about why I'm gonna recommend them to beginners. The bare minimum, I would keep a ball python in as a 40 gallon breeder, again, or something similar in size. So again, they're gonna need an enclosure that they can kind of explore and be able to stretch a decent amount in. So they do need a decent size, that's a downside, but this is why they're great. Basically the same reasons as corn snakes. The temperature requirement's super easy, they don't require any lights, just use a heat pad and a thermostat, and then their humidity requirement isn't super high either. And another great thing about ball pythons is just how docile and handleable they are. Usually when you're holding them, they barely even move, and they're just so calm and gentle and slow. Whereas when you try to hold like a corn snake, they're usually a lot quicker. And then once again, you only have to feed a ball python once every couple weeks typically, and they just don't eat often. You just feed them a mouse or a rat that's an appropriate size. But the downside and the reason why a lot of people don't recommend ball pythons is that they are known to be picky eaters. And I'm really conflicted with this because to me having a picky eater can be frustrating, but it's not the end of the world. To me, it doesn't negate the fact that overall, they are very easy to take care of. I think the issue is a lot of people, if they get a ball python and they don't know a lot about snakes or they're new to reptile keeping, if they get a ball python that's a picky eater, they will freak out and they'll be like, my snake hasn't eaten in a month, what do I do? I think as long as you do your research about that topic beforehand and you're just well-versed in different feeding tactics and how to deal with a picky eater and when to actually be concerned, I really don't think it's the end of the world because ball pythons are just known to go on hunger strikes. They can go like a year without eating realistically. If you have like an adult healthy ball python, they can go a long time without eating. It can be frustrating having a ball python that goes on hunger strikes, but it really isn't usually the end of the world. As long as you're keeping track of their weight and they aren't losing weight really quickly or anything like that. I still included ball pythons on this list just because overall they are a very simple creature to take care of and I think they make great pets. You just need to be prepared in the case that your ball python does go on a hunger strike and there is a fairly decent chance that at some point in its life it will. So yeah, with that being said, those are the top four reptiles that in my opinion are some of the easiest to take care of. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Check out my social media links which will be linked down in the description below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Down, yeah. I've been feeling so, I've been feeling so down, yeah. Can you tell me why? Can you tell me why? I'm down, yeah. No friends of mine, no friends of mine around, yeah. Now I'm thinking, now, now I'm thinking.